are now available on Tata Sky channel number 526. Welcome to the news on Magic Bricks now India's first property channel I'm Amita Balchandra let's take a look at the top headlines at this hour Bombay High Court stays new constructions in the city bans construction of new hotels commercial property and even residential property starting today the ban comes in the aftermath of the fire in the Diona dumping ground Green lobby cries foul over Art of Living's mega 3 day event to be held on the flood plains of Yamuna organizers have been accused of violating construction permits and pollution norms we get you highlights of the national green tribunal's expert committee report that is a magic tricks now exclusive post budget cheer spreads on property market home buyers welcome finance ministers uh, affordable housing initiatives but Developers want more than just the abolition of dividend distribution tax. Big shocker there coming in for Mumbai no new constructions will be allowed in the city the Bombay High Court has passed an order to ban construction of new hotels commercial property and even residential property the High Court stay order comes As an aftermath of the Diona fires my colleague Ashwarya Palawal who's been tracking the cl- case very closely gets us more details In a landmark order High Court has banned any new construction to take place in Mumbai The High Court said that this order does not apply to educational and hosp- educational institute as well as hospitals it also does not apply to redevelopment to SRA projects and Mahada redevelopment projects It said that the state can come back to the high court for it to modify this law but for that to happen the state needs to meet two targets these two targets include one of them is that the state needs to give an assessment report as to how new construction affects solid waste management also it needs to come out with the new facilities that it will put into place so that the dumping that is taking place at Dionar and Mulun does not take place any further The Bombay High Court also noticed that it is highly inefficient on the BMC and on state government's part not to comply with the earlier order. In 2015, uh, there was a deadline put out in 2013 by High Court. They had said that new dumping grounds should come out with by 2015. Now this deadline has been extended to 30th June 2017, which means that dumping at Dionar can still take place till 30th June 2017. After that, High Court says that it needs a foolproof plan from both BMC as well as the state government as to what they will do with this menace that has been a major problem for the citizens of Mumbai. Now let me tell you that this order has come after. after a PIL was filed against BMC for taking no action against the fire that took place in Dionar in January now that fire had pushed Mumbai's pollution levels to hazardous levels of 300 now after this order residents hope that BMC and the state government will sit up and take notice of this problem that has been creating havoc for their lives for quite some time now all right now Ashwarya also caught up with a few residents to get their reactions on the high court order listen in Actually, I think it is a wonderful order. Needed a lot of guts and daring, but still, he has. It's a very balanced order, frankly. And um, expectations, I don't know. Going by the reputation of the municipal corporation, I don't think I should expect anything. Otherwise, I'll be very disappointed. Because uh, right from 2000, they are supposed to be doing things, and they have done nothing. Uh, the order has been good, and it's been right, uh, right like this from the beginning. but it's about bmc whether they want to implement it or they don't want to implement it. it's time that we start making them accountable on all the points that the court has said it's very important that bmc understands that this is not a joke it's they're playing uh, with so many lives it's more it looks like you know it's it's homicide it's mass homicide that and they're not bothered about it Now earlier we also caught up with Arvind Nandan a CEO and executive director at Lysis for us and asked him what kind of an impact this order will have on Mumbai's real estate sector and on home prices listen in I would actually think that uh, it should not turn into something bigger but if it, if it does let's say the government is unable to uh, come up with some concrete steps or the court is unable to recognize the the steps that the government proposes then definitely there is a chance that uh, 
uh, other people, there are various other parties of inter the interest groups who could uh, jump into it, who could actually bring bigger issues to the, to the fore. And in such a scenario, then we definitely have uh, a very, very difficult situation ahead because then you cannot really construct uh, any new thing. Uh, barring you know some of those which have been allowed like schools or hospitals or maybe MADA or SRA certain bodies that are allowed but private constructions will come to a grinding halt if this happens which again you know I must stress I believe uh, should not go that far but if it happens then there is uh, there, there are private interest groups there is opposition which is always there and there are several other parties who can then create uh, a very big awareness or a very big uh, campaign around it and uh, net net uh, everything put together it can actually harm the real estate scenario in the city. Prices will get affected only if uh, this has a long-term impact. If, let us say, if this is something that's going to be short in, uh, solved in a short while, then I don't think the prices should take a major beating or, or, or on the contrary, should not go high. But if, yes, it spins into something uh, of a major trouble, then you have a monster waiting and then the prices will definitely get affected. It's difficult to predict which way it might go. Uh, it might go sliding. Or if there is a very huge limitation in supply, then they may, they may start to skyrocket. So uh, one has to really wait and watch uh, as of date. Moving on, the Art of Living's three-day World Culture Festival scheduled to be held on the floodplains of the Yamuna River Bank has hit a legal hurdle. The Green Lobby has alleged that organizers have been clearing acres of land to erect a gigantic seven-acre stage for the event that will host about 35,000 participants. Remember, NGT has banned construction on the Yamuna floodplains. The NGT had also appointed a committee to visit the site. Our reporter Deepa Rana accessed an exclusive copy of the committee's report, which was presented in the court. She sent us this report earlier today. A NOIDA-based environmentalist has moved to the court against the order given by the DDA to uh, the Art of Living Foundation to start construction on the banks of the Yamuna River for an event which is supposed to take place from 11 to 13th March. Now today, uh, while hearing the, co the entire uh, case, the petitioner's lawyer informed court that the Art of Living Foundation has uh, violated the order of the NGT. Also, an NG, the NGT had earlier uh, made a committee, an expert committee, which uh, visited the site and made observations on what kind of damage has been done on the banks of the Yamuna River. I have a copy of that uh, report which the NGT's expert committee has submitted uh, to the NGT. Now, this report has various observations. Firstly, the entire area on the DND and the river bank has been leveled flat. A huge damage to the ecological, uh, ecological environment has been done. Also, uh, there have been parking made, 650 portable toilets are uh, being proposed and uh, uh, there have been uh, pontoon bridges which are going to be made for people to actually put enzymes into the bank, into the river, Yamuna River. The recommendations which the NGT's expert committee has made include that uh, a rough estimate of about 100 to 150 crores has to be submitted by the Art of Living Foundation before the event. Secondly, that uh, the, uh, there has to be a strong message given to the DDA and other organization so that this kind of violation do not happen in future. It's time to talk about the union budget and its impact on home buyers. The union budget had a slew of proposals that incentivize the first time home buyer. So if you're in the, in the market to buy a home, you don't want to miss out on what's coming up next on the bulletin. Now, Tax expert Vinay Singh joins me on the phone line to break down tax implications on buying, selling and leasing property. Vinay, thank you so much uh, for being here on Magic Pricks. Now, first of all, uh, what are the taxes that I have to pay while buying a house and how do I save on those taxes? Well, the, the taxes that you normally would end up paying are VAT and uh, that would uh, vary from state to state. Although quite a few states have got a composition rate of 1%. Uh, service tax is the other tax that you would need to pay when you are buying a property and that now with the new budget will range from 3.75% to 4.5% depending on the size of your flat and the value of the flat. Now these two taxes can be avoided by you if you decide to wait till the builder has obtained the, either the completion certificate or the occupancy certificate because uh, uh, these taxes are not applicable on ready properties. It's also probably a wise move given the current scenario. So you could look at that to save tax. All right. Now, uh, if I take a home loan to finance this, uh, what are the tax benefits that I get? 
Well, uh, the the new thing in Budget 2016 is that you have a new section coming in ATEE, which is a section which will uh, give you uh, a deduction of 50,000 rupees in terms of interest that you pay. This is available to first-time buyers, first-time home buyers. and uh, it's restricted to cases where the property does not exceed 50 lakhs in value and your loan size does not exceed 35 lakhs so essentially i can see that this will for smaller uh, cities or in the outskirts because anything in say a city like mumbai uh, nothing is there available uh, you know less than a crore of rupees right up to borivli perhaps all right let's say i am investing in a property right now and i lease it out do i still get that benefit of deduction on home loan Yes, yes, you do get a deduction. In fact, it gets better when you lease it out, uh, for the simple reason that if you have rented it out, you are earning uh, rental income which you are going to pay tax on. So the normal uh, limit of two lakhs, which is available on self-occupied property, uh, it does not apply to you, and you could claim the entire interest on your home loan that you are paying without any limit whatsoever. This is also true if you are property, if it's a second property and uh, not sublet but lying vacant. Uh, so long as the second property is called deemed let out there too you can claim interest without any limit all right also when i give us some more clarity on what uh, taxes i have to pay if i sell the property well if you are selling property uh, uh, the first tax that obviously comes to mind is capital gains tax which will arise uh, on the uh, profit that you make now obviously if you are uh, selling if you not held the property for more than 3 years the the uh, the capital gains is called short term capital gains basically it will just get added to your income and whatever slab you land up in you will pay the tax accordingly you will not be entitled to claim any of the other deductions which are available in long term capital gains once you have held a property for 3 years you could uh, claim deduction by investing in uh, capital gains bonds up to 50 lakhs uh, per transaction Uh, you could also uh, invest in another house property and get away by paying no capital gains all these things are available however only for long term capital gains one thing i would like to point out as far as maharashtra is concerned that under the maharashtra stamp act if you have uh, purchased something in investment and you are reselling that property within a year the stamp duty that you paid at the time of purchase is possible to be set off and uh, you know to the extent the, the new buyer can claim that uh, reduction when he is buying it from you so this is one benefit that you know most people may not be aware of but definitely it's available also you spoke about uh, capital gains now how do i save on long term and short term capital gains tax well short term as i said there is no possibility of saving any tax because there are no deductions available there but uh, once you held it for 3 years and you have made long term gains you could buy capital gain bonds uh, normally you will find that not a national highway authority of india or rural electrification corporation other two types of bonds which are normally available so you have a limit of 50 lakhs up to 50 lakhs of your gains you can invest in these bonds these bonds are uh, locked in for 3 years they'll give you interest perhaps by about 5 and a half to 6% but after 3 years they are free for you to do what you like and you do not have to pay uh, capital gains tax on the amount that you invested in these bonds so this is your uh, this is one deduction the other deduction available is if you sold any asset and you uh, other than say a house property and you are investing it in uh, a house property because you don't own more than one house at that point the 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 amount that you are investing there you will be able to claim a deduction under section 54f so these are the principal two deductions that you can claim All right, Vinay. Many thanks for joining us here on Magic Bricks. Now, moving on to fuel activity in the housing sector, the finance minister doled out tax exemptions and slashed interest on houses up to 50 lakh rupees. But will these reforms spur demand and supply of affordable homes from developers? Ruchi Deshpande gets us a complete picture. Uh, based on what was announced uh, by the finance minister in yesterday's budget, everything related to affordable housing was announced with a view of seeing a growth uh, in the demand for affordable housing. But when we spoke to developers, while they are intent on uh, increasing the supply of affordable housing, there are a few clarifications uh, that they require uh, in order to do so. First off, uh, they need an income tax exemption to be uh, to be levied on the projects uh, and extended it up to five years instead of the three. 
three years that were uh, mentioned by the finance minister. The reason for this, uh, they cited, is that uh, it's not possible to complete uh, long-term projects uh, within three years. And if they do not do so, then they will not avail of uh, this income tax exemption. Secondly, they want the tax exemption to be uh, be, uh, be on the projects which are not in participation uh, with, uh, with the, the government under a PPP model. This is what was announced. They want this exemption on other uh, projects uh, by private developers so that their customers too can uh, avail of this tax exemption. And thirdly, uh, the developers told us that they need uh, an excise duty exemption uh, on pre-made uh, pre or uh, pre-made um, construction or uh, the parts that they assemble within a factory so that it's possible for them uh, to go ahead and build uh, uh, affordable homes at a faster rate. Now, just to recap, the finance minister said yesterday that uh, there, would, there would be a 100% tax uh, deduction on the profits for homes uh, built on uh, 30 square meters within the metros uh, and uh, 60 square meters outside the metros. So if, if the developers could get tax clarifications uh, over, the, over what was announced, then we might as well see more uh, demand for affordable homes uh, in the country. All right. Now, earlier in the day, we also caught up with Nitin Kulkarni of Vastu Shodh and asked him what kind of an impact this move will have on the real estate sector. Listen in. To be very honest, uh, the finance minister has tried to meet the expectations of the affordable housing players in real estate industry. The income tax benefit, similar to the ATIB function, uh, it is extended for all projects which are in municipal limits or uh, cantonment board limits. Vis-a-vis -vis the metros have been given a 25 kilometer radius for these projects. So as you can understand all the affordable housing projects get uh, are normally out of the city because land price is the most important criteria. So if I have to do affordable housing in city limits then it is practically impossible to deliver a product which will uh, which will suit the EWS, LIG, MIG category. They should have put a similar or maybe a greater limit 25 to 50 kilometers limit from the corporation areas, from the municipal areas or from the cantonment areas. Now we are private developers uh, buying our own lands, constructing our own projects. So what I feel is the similar uh, service tax exemption should have been offered to our customers also because all the 14,000 homes what I am constructing right now are in the affordable housing criteria less than 60 square meter carpet area. So my customers also should get this benefit. This will help them make a decision and come forward and buy their first home. Uh, Vastu Shod is currently having 12 different projects across Pune, Kolhapur, Baramati and uh, Mumbai that is Boisar. All these majority of these projects are already sanctioned. Some are in the stages of uh, approval, some are in the stages of construction, some are nearing completion. So uh, we will not uh, be able to uh, add on any new project uh, in line with whatever announcement the finance minister has done. So that is the reason why I said very clearly that the income tax benefit should be extended to projects which are already in the pipeline, already sanctioned. Why wait for 1st June 2016 to offer this kind of an income tax benefit? Segment what we are catering to, EWS, LIG, they were uh, motivated enough by the CLSS happening. Uh, credit link subsidy scheme was, uh, uh, some of our customers have received the 2,20,000 uh, interest subsidy already in their loan accounts. That reduces their burden to uh, about 60% uh, of their EMI or 60% of the tenure for a 10-12 lakh rupee home. Service tax waivers, stamp duty waivers, uh, uh, all these things will definitely help. If, if, if at all we get the income tax benefit, we would also be able to pass on some benefit to the customer retaining part of it to us. All right, now along with affordable housing, there was some kind of relief coming in for REITs or real estate investment trusts as well. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley in his budget speech abolished DDT or dividend distribution tax on REITs. This comes in as a major tax relief for the industry, which is hoping for some clarity on REITs. While the industry hopes for more clarity on other taxes levied on REITs, we caught up with Samir Kanabad, tax expert at Ernst & Young, and asked him whether this move would actually materialize into REITs being launched this year. Listen in. So government has, while done away with the dividend distribution tax, this means that at least the investor can now hope for a better return. And obviously, the return of an investor is a function of the value at which the investor invests in REIT. 
uh, and the return that the investor gets. So now for a REIT to be successful, it will be now more of a valuation game between the developer or the sponsor and the investor that how much value is a developer or a sponsor going to command to put a reasonably quality asset into the REIT and as a result what return would the investor get assuming that now there are no more tax leakages uh, apart from normal tax which the uh, property uh, profits uh, or the profits earned from the property is required to be paid. Apart from DDT there were other requests also from the industry on, on, on REIT uh, to make it more successful and the other request was to sort of uh, have uh, tax neutral status to restructure the organizations to form a REIT structure. If the developer or sponsor has to create or restructure its uh, uh, business model and sort of carve out the assets which are scattered or put uh, or which are clubbed in different entities, there is a tax cost. For example, there is stamp duty if you have to move an asset or if you have to do transfer of uh, uh, shares that has been government has already new, uh, tax neutralized. So any change in shareholding government has tax neutralized. But if you have a partnership or an LLP structure and if there is any restructuring happening then again there is a tax cost which government has not neutralized. So there are some of these concerns and I believe uh, uh, these were more of secondary concerns and not primary because this results into a tax cost to the sponsor or the developer but primarily does not impact the return in the hands of the investor in a REIT or the return uh, that is expected by a REIT. So other countries like US, Singapore, uh, they are being having this business trust or a REIT structure uh, for several years. So they have matured, they have graduated and sort of they have uh, moved up the value chain by clearing various uh, in uh, hurdles or lacunas uh, in their countries. So I don't think it is right to say that whether India is matured enough or whether India is ready or investor would want to come to India for a REIT. I think as we discussed earlier, if there is a quality asset available and, and we believe that yes, various developers have various types of uh, REIT uh, related assets in their portfolio and if, if these are offered at the right value, then I am sure that the investors uh, would want to take an exposure into India as compared to global markets. And with that, we've completely run out of time on the show. But if you have any feedback or suggestions for us, write to us on the email IDs flashing on your screens. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Feel free to tweet to us or post your query on our Facebook page. Also, check out our website mbnow.in. The IDs are on your screens and we would love to hear from you. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News on Magic Pricks Now. Thank you for watching.